We greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. In reverence to the word of the Lord, I would like to invite those who can to stand up this moment. We're going to read Psalm Psalm 116. 116. We're going to read verse. Verses 7, 7, 8, and 13. Amen. Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. Now verse 13. I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord God, we praise you. We're thankful for yet this moment of fellowship for the blood of Jesus that has allowed us to be in your presence. And we plead, Lord, that in your word, you may continue blessing your people, your church, the visitors that came to your sanctuary tonight. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The psalm it speaks of love and gratitude. Two things that should follow the servant of the Lord throughout all the days of their lives because the connection of salvation is in love and the love of God is a cause that we are not destroyed because love loved the world in so, such a way that sent his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. And the gratitude is for you to recognize this great love that the Lord has towards our life. And the word says that, it speaks about a man here. A man that recognized the love and the gratitude of God. A servant of God in such a way that he there's a psalm in the Bible that was written by him and he says I love the Lord because he heard my voice I love the Lord because he uh, listened to my plea I love the Lord because because he has inclined uh, when I was in, in sadness I called upon the Lord and He delivered me. He delivered my soul. And then He says, Gracious is the Lord, so God has mercy of me. And He says, And righteousness, and righteous. And he says afterwards, now no longer in singular, now in plural. The Lord preserves the Lord, preserves the simple. He has mercy. Yes, our God is merciful. So in this moment in the life of this individual, it's, it's clear here. He says the following. Return to your rest, O my soul. So there is a moment in the light in his life when you return is because one day you left, right? You went away. 
So, in other words, you distanced yourself, left the presence of your God. And then he, he notices that when this happened, when he distanced himself, when he went apart from the Lord, and we can even say, we can even boldly say that, uh, speak about the parable of Jesus, uh, speaking about uh, the son that left. He took his inheritance and went away. And he lost all his inheritance. And when he lost everything that he had, all his inheritance, the prodigious son, he analyzed his life and talked to himself and said to himself, the house of my father, in the house of my father is abundance of bread, and here I am perishing of hunger. And then he tells himself, I'll get up and go to be with my father, and I'll get in front of daddy, and I'm going to say, I sinned against heaven and you. Father, I'm unworthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your servants. So, my brethren, in the day in which that individual made a decision to return to the house of the father, the father was not caught by surprise. When he thought about returning, when he entered on the way leading towards the house of his father, the Bible says that in the house of the father, everything was already prepared to receive the son. The Bible says that the father ran out and jumped on the neck of his son, kissed him, put sandals on his feet, dressed him up, and a ring on his finger. And there was a really, already a banquet prepared for him. That's the law of the father. And that day, the son was able to experience this, how much his father loved him, how much this son was cherished by his father. It was not just any garment, it was the best garment. And here, the individual here, he says, return, to my, return my soul. It is like a dialogue to himself, in the same way like the prodigious son was speaking to himself, I'm going to get up, I'm going to return to, house, to the house of my father. He was, it was him speaking to himself or speaking to his soul and recognizing the great love that God had towards his life. And here the psalmist, he does the same thing. He says, return to your rest, O my soul. So his soul at that moment, because it was distant from God, his soul had no rest. In other words, had no peace. And maybe one of the things that is most difficult to find in our days is peace. And when Jesus departs, he says the following, I'm going, but I'll leave you with me, with you, my, my peace. So that man had anguish on his soul because he was, he didn't have any peace. And how many people at this moment in which we're living don't have peace? And why they don't have any peace? Because they are distant from the plan and the project of God for their lives. There is an individual that was in the temple. He was led there by the Holy Spirit 
because on that day he was going to have a meeting with the Lord because the Lord had revealed to him that he was not going to die before he was able to see the Redeemer, Christ, the Son of God. And when he arrives in the temple, Jesus was a child of eight days. And then he picks up that child and he picks up on his arms and he says, Now, Lord, send your, your servant in peace because my eyes have already seen your salvation. Man, man can only depart in peace when in the moment in which their eyes see the salvation of the Lord. Salvation is Christ. Now he had peace. Why? Because he now embraced Christ, took Christ on his brace, on his arms. Now he knew that he could depart. Why? Why? Because his soul was going to find a place of rest. And Jesus says, and you will find rest for your soul. And then the individual analyzed himself. And there's a, a verse in the Bible that says, examine man himself. We are very good in, in analyzing everyone around us and give advice to others. We're very good at, at, at identifying a problem in the life of someone else. But in the, life, in the time of Jesus, it was the same. And at, at one point, Jesus said, take first the big piece of wood from your eye before you take a peck from the eye of your brother. Because on those days, people kept looking at the, this small Piece, piece of wood in everyone else's eyes, but did not notice the piece, large piece of wood in their eyes. So this individual, instead of looking for failures and flaws, and many times we think and we looked for flaws in other people. Oh, the business didn't work out. I'm sad and anguished and this and that, and because of this, because of that, because of that individual. But he, this man had understood the following day. The problem was himself. And we need to understand this, that my problem is me. I am, I always tell my wife, I'm a big problem. And the Bible says, why do men complain about? Do you know this verse? Man complains about their own sins. When you see somebody complaining, yeah, they're complaining about themselves. So now this individual, he says, return to your rest, O my soul. So he recognized that he failed. He went apart from the Lord. And since he was the one who went away, then he is the one who has to return. Isn't it true? If you take the prodigious son, the prodigious son went away. Did the father send anyone after him? No. Why is that? Because he made a decision to go. I have free will. I have free will. If I want, in a few minutes, I can simply get out of this church and that's it. And the prodigious son went away and nobody went after him but he recognized that the flaw was his then he decided to return and return to your father to your arms so when you go to the lost sheep the lost sheep does not return the shepherd went out to take the sheep because the sheep got lost it is different one made a decision and the other did not, got lost. And many times we got lost. And when he got lost, the shepherd went out to take the sheep. But when the son decided to leave, now he had to make a decision to return with his own feet. So now this individual here, he said, return to your 
rest, O my soul, because I need to rest. I need to return to the rest, to the, the shelter of the Lord. Whoever rests in the shelter of the Lord and the shade of the Almighty will rest. So I need to return. I need to go back to the house of my Father, to the house of God, to the presence of my God. I need to have peace. The peace that you are seeking, the joy that you desire. There's a song that speaks about this. So then he understands that he failed, he had a mistake, made a mistake. And the Bible says that we, if we confess our sins, God is powerful to forgive us. And it's written like this. So he goes and analyzes himself and says, returns to your rest, O oh my soul. He recognizes that the Lord, the Lord did good things. So the Lord always did good things to him. So it's very important. The Lord always does good things to us. God is good. It is written in the Bible. At a certain point, and if you just said, good master, Jesus said, no, good is God. God is good. And God only does good things. It is impossible for God to do bad things. But you can say, well, why then there is evil? Evil is the absence of good. If you are in the presence of good, of God, you always do good things. If you go astray from the Lord, you stop doing the good things. It's like darkness. Darkness does not exist. What exists is the absence of light. It's like the cold. Cold does not exist. What exists is the absence of heat. That's right. God only does good things. God is good. So he says, Return to your rest, O my soul. I will return to, for, for the presence, to the presence of the Lord. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For, for you have delivered my soul from death. So my brethren, the greatest gift that you can receive in your life is to have your life, have your soul delivered from death. I'm not speaking about physical death because that would be easy. Now he speaks about the death of the soul. For you have delivered my soul from death. Only God can do this. The deliver deliverance of a soul, only God can give you. Only God can give me. And this is the greatest reward the greatest gift that man can receive to have his soul delivered from eternal death or delivered from con eternal condemnation free from hell I'm going to speak a, a little more clearly because there are only two destinations for the soul either to the presence of God heaven of heaven, the eternity of God the kingdom of God or hell hell, the name already says it is hell there so the Bible says the following, For you have delivered my soul from death, and then it says, My eyes from tears, and, and God will dry up all your tears. There's not going to have death and tears or any suffering in heaven. So God delivered my soul from eternal death. He delivered me from any suffering and any anguish and sadness and pain. And it says, and my feet from falling. When you speak about falling, it speaks about sin. The fall of man, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, the fall of man. It's the sin of man. So the feet speaks about, about walking. If you are on the way, which is the Lord Jesus, you are free from falling. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one go to the Father but through Him. So He recognizes all those things. He understands, therefore, 
what God had done on his behalf and to his benefit. And now, now he ana analyzes it, thinks, and he says, I will take up the cup of salvation. So in other words, I need to accept the project of God for my life. I recognize that God is good. I have gratitude for what God has done for me. The Lord has delivered me. Deliver is, to, is the same as to save, isn't it true? Somebody was delivered from death. On the other words, he was saved. And because he was saved, why was he saved? Because somebody saved him. Deliverance it speaks about paying a price. In Jesus, to deliver my soul and your soul from death, Jesus paid a high price on the cross of Calvary, demonstrating this love of God towards my life and towards your life, towards our lives. So then when he says, uh, we'll take up the cup of salvation, he's speaking about the cup of Jesus. Jesus, when he comes to his disciples, he says, this is the cup, the new commandment on my blood. So he was speaking about the cup of salvation. So in other words, is the cup of salvation, is the cup of the manifestation of the love of God. He's saying that on the shedding of his blood on the cross of Calvary, you, me, and each one of us have been delivered from the fall to sin, delivered from uh, the, our soul had been delivered from death and our eyes have been dried up from our tears by the Lord. So now he makes a decision. He says, I'm going to take up the cup and I'm going to accept the project of God in my life. So now when he speaks about the cup of salvation, he doesn't speak about the cup of condemnation because there was a cup of condemnation. But the cup of condemnation, Jesus drank which was bitter, but present, represented the sin of humanity. And he drank this cup on the cross of Calvary. So he, death, he took the cup of death in order to give us the cup of eternal life. And when he recognizes this, he says, and I'll take up the cup of salvation, accept this project and, uh, and call upon the name of the Lord. And what is to call? call is to proclaim, is to proclaim, to spread, is to evangelize, is to declare that from this day forward, he had made a definition in the presence of, of God. And from that moment forward, he has understood the plan and the project of God for his life. And the Lord has shown tonight a man. And this man, throughout the week, he has received a deliverance from death. You did not die because God delivered you. It's not because you did something that allowed you to deliver yourself from it. It was not luck. It was deliverance. It was deliverance from God. And yesterday, he tried to come to the church, but he was unable to, and the Lord is showing the de de details, so sh you may understand that it is with you that God is speaking. I don't know who you are, no one knows, but God knows and is speaking to you directly. He's, he was trying to come to the server, but was unable, but tonight the Lord has brought him to this place, and he wants to renew, renew your spiritual life. I want to tell you that the situation that went through was a warning, because this man was going astray from the plan and the project that God has for his life. You know what that means? It means that God is good and that God loves you. He is speaking with you directly and showing to you that he has protected you, has preserved you, has given this to you as a sign so that you may continue walking in his presence without going astray from the project that he has for your life. Amen. Let's sing a song now.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. The church will stand up. We're going to have a word of glorification to our Lord. Let's be on the Lord, in the name of the Lord, because you praise the Lord. We praise you for everything that I've done, Lord. Have no words, Lord, to praise you, to thank you, Lord. Holy name of Jesus. Lord, receive the praise and adoration and gratitude before your face. Bless your people. Each life who entered here in your sanctuary and also their homes, their families, protecting them, delivering them from any evil, and giving them new experiences with you, Lord. Opening the doors, Lord. Heal the sick, manifest through dreams, visions, and revelations, showing and revealing, Lord, your plan, your project to each person here present in this place. Give a wake of presence, in your, the, peace in their presence, we pray in the holy name of Jesus. In your name we say, the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the good and eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit may be with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The bread may be seated. The, to the church, I'd like to inform the need to fill out the, the registration that was mentioned in the morning. You need to read it for, with the group uh, assistant and uh, right, remind the church from that from this Thursday forward, our service is going to be in presence. Our prayer service is going to be here in presence. It's going to be on Thursday. There will be no longer this Zoom service or through YouTube. It's going to be here in presence every Thursday. Amen. Amen. If you desire. Amen. If want any of the brethren have not given the name for the spirit of prayer that we're going to have in the last week of this month in relation to the work and, and abroad and the election in Brazil and also here, there is still nine spots. If you, the brethren have not given the name and want to participate with us, place your name on the spots that are still available so that we can try to complete this period of 96 people, 96 people praying 24 hours a day. Amen. If you desire a prayer for a life, a clarification about the message or the spiritual gift that you heard tonight, just raise your hand. I want to give you the proper assistance. From the, uh, I really like to thank you for your visit. You are welcome to be here. We have service every Thursday now, Saturdays and Sunday night at 7.30 and Sunday morning at 10.30 in the morning in Sunday school. And you are our guest. You're invited to participate and to all the peace of the Lord. And the service on Thursday is at 8. Only this one, all the others are 7.30. Amen. <laughs> 